beneath the surface of things is a world a billion times smaller than we are, one that many say holds the secrets to everything. Chemical physics is a subdiscipline of both chemistry and physics, where research applies physical methods and theories to study properties of chemical systems. Chemical physics plays a part in countless industries, and your education in chemical physics brings great opportunities both in and outside the lab. You're using physics to study chemistry, uh, or you're using, you're you're doing a lot of chemistry, and you're uh, you're really focusing on the the, uh, the the chemicals, the molecules, the materials, the reactions, the structures, utilizing physics, physics theory, but also physics instrumentation. It provides a unique insight into the chemistry and into the physics of a certain process. Um, it relates to chemical engineering in the way that. Chem in chemical engineering reactions are incredibly important and the way that chemical reactions occur some aspects of it we are very familiar with and some not um, we don't really know how the molecules interact in such ways to produce what what we see because you're actually looking at an atomic level or even a subatomic level in some cases and you're seeing the physics so you start looking at the quantum mechanics of how those atoms are actually working there's a certain rigor to doing um, sort of uh, to studying sciences, um, whether it's chemistry or physics or mathematics, there's a rigor there to you know starting with a with a problem, working through the problem, coming up with the with the with the definite solution. So quantum um, quantum mechanics, um, statistical mechanics, kinetic theories will allow chemists who are used to work with large systems to better understand the basic elements of how those systems work. Careers in the sciences continue to grow each and every year. As part of your education, a focus on chemical physics leads you to a huge array of positions in a growing list of industries. The multidisciplinary nature of chemical physics allows you to find jobs in research, engineering, electronics, biotechnology, and pharmaceutical, just to name a few. Um, so, for example, one of the things that I work on is trying to find a replacement for the silicon transistor. Um, and then our job is to really design experiments, execute experiments, and then analyze the data. Um, and then, based on that, we, we sort of you know, keep the research project moving forward. Where we're looking at developing thin films, particularly for drug delivery applications. Um, so these thin films are akin to Listerine strips, or they make caffeine strips for delivery of drugs in a different way than a pill or a patch. I, I focus on the nanoscale, and the reason we look at things in such a small, detailed scale is that it, uh, we can uh, get new phenomena out of the out of the material and new properties out of the material when we scale it down. I work on hydrogen storage materials and with these materials once we heat them up we want the hydrogen as a gas so that we can use that as a fuel in fuel cells to generate electricity. Uh, I have a uh you know, interests in um, biophysical chemistry, where I'm interested in studying, uh, you know, f using physical chemistry to study uh, biomolecules and the structures and stabilities of biomolecules like proteins. And the idea there is if we understand proteins and how they interact with ionic liquids and how they're stabilized or destabilized by ionic liquids, we can design ionic liquid type systems and solvents and uh, co-solvents uh, for protein applications in biomedicine and biochemistry. What I do is I determine the three-dimensional structure of proteins. You purify protein to a high um, purity and then you concentrate it at a very high concentration. You then crystallize it, you try to get it into a crystal form, and then we take those crystals and freeze them and put them in the diffractometer. So some of the work that I've been doing has been working at looking at diseases in different ways. So how do we look at them, not from a, this is what this disease does, but how does disease play out and what does it affect as a, as a whole? Um, applying those principles of chemistry and physics and medicine, biology, and all of those things as well. So with, with a chemical engineering background, you could, you could end up in industry, in private industry, working in a chemical plant. You could end up working in a scientific lab. You could work for the government in a job like I do, um, providing assurance work. You could work as a quality engineer. You could work as an industrial engineer. 
We have um, some, some of the, the world's best or the country's best national labs. There's a lot of uh, fine universities, of course. Um, there's a lot of biotechnology. Tissue engineering labs um, and companies doing tissue engineering as well. Some doing materials characterization. I have friends in the petrochemical industries, uh, people who work for ExxonMobil and Texaco. And I think that this is the real value of physical chemistry because as a physical chemist, you get training in instrumentation. You get training in different types of instrumentation. You get training in understanding about molecules in uh, by everything from proteins down to small molecules, um, high you know, inorganic chemistry, hydrogen generation, you know, kind of the broad spectrum there. There are all these different things that, that may be possible. Can we figure out what they are and how they work and how can we use that to do something new and exciting and helpful?